So in the layouts in the upper ribbon, select the method layout. This is where we set up the parameters for my, for running this compact HPLC. On the upper left hand corner, just underneath where it says acquisition method dash untitled, there is a far left panel. And you'll see general and then immediately below that properties. Click on the properties. This affords us an opportunity to put in a description of what this acquisition method is. I'm going to put in seminar demo method. Now notice the method status is currently set to generic, but it's grayed out. And that's because the project that we opened our HPLC from does not have that approve method tab selected. So at this point, I can use any type of method that is available, whether it's one I'm creating here or whether it was one that was created in the past and still in that methods directory. Immediately below the instrument setup, select the grad pump. For the flow, I want you to set the flow at one mil per minute. Selecting below that, there are solvents, A and B. I'm gonna type in water for my first solvent in that text box immediately to the right of the A and the percent sign. But notice I can't type anything in in that text box below that where my B is. And that's because I have to enable the B channel first by selecting the little uh, check mark immediately to the right of B colon in that center panel. Now I can type in ACN, for instance, as my acetonitrile for my B channel. Now this is a compact HPLC from Agilent. A compact HPLC from Agilent only has two channels, even though it's a gradient pump. Now, if this were your 1290, 1260 Infinity 2, and you had a gradient pump, all four of those channels would automatically populate or be available here for you to be able to choose the, um, the information as to what the solvent is, what the composition is going to be, et cetera. We're going to leave the pressure limits below that exactly where they are for default. The stop time. I'm going to select the second radio button and I'm going to keep my stop time at one minute for now. And I'm not going to put in a post time at this point in time. But I do want to run a gradient run. So on the right hand panel, I'm going to select the add button below that timetable. And that adds a new line to my timetable up above. I'm going to keep the time point at one minute and I'm going to change that percent B instead of from zero to 100. I'm going to leave the flow and the max pressure exactly the way they are. And that means that I am now creating a gradient to go from 100% water to 100% acetonitrile over the course of that one minute run. Next, go down to the sampler. My injection volume is fine at five microliters. Now this is an old style auto sampler, which has a gripper arm assembly that picks up the vials, put it, puts it underneath the needle, the needle goes down into the vial, et cetera. So if I were worried about something sticking to the outside of my needle, I could enable an external needle wash. Then I would tell it to go to a different vial position, pick up another vial where the needle could be placed and just the outside of the needle washed. In this case, I don't care about that. I'm going to put the stop time, again, the same as the pump and no limit, and nothing with the post time. And everything under the advanced characteristics on the right-hand panel, I'm going to leave exactly the way they are. Next, on the left-hand panel, underneath the instrument setup, I'm going to select the column oven. In this case, because I am in a virtual environment, I am not going to, to control the column oven doesn't really make sense because I'm in a virtual environment. And then finally, I want you to go down to the diode array, the DAD setting. And we've got, I want to set this signal A at 254 nanometers with a four nanometer bandwidth. 
Now notice because this is a diode array detector, I can set a multitude of different signals. And I can also decide whether or not I want to turn on reference or not turn on reference. What grading settings did we use? We simply went from 100% A to 100% B over the course of one minute. That's all. 100% A to 100% B over the course of one minute by just adding that one line in the table over to the right. Then don't change anything for either the sampler or the column oven and go down to the diode array detector instead. Change that, band, uh, that uh, wavelength from 250 to 254 nanometers. Now, because this is a diode array detector, I can also store spectra. And if I select that pull down menu on the right hand panel from the store where it says none, I have a variety of different options. Again, if you don't know what these options are, this is a great opportunity for you to use the F1 button to be able to open up the Open Lab CDS Health and Learning and find out what these options are. In this particular case, I am going to select the all in peak, which means that it is going to do all the spectra from 190 nanometers to 400 nanometers every time the threshold of 10 milliAU has been um, the baseline has attenuated more than 10 milliAUs. I'm going to immediately start storing all of the spectra in that peak. And I'm not going to change anything else in the diode array detector settings. Notice that we have now run out of options for the method. We didn't talk about anything about acquisition, about data analysis, data integration, calibration, and report generation. Again, that's because of the complete separation between the acquisition portion of the software and the data analysis portion. So instead, when we are acquiring data, the only thing that we are doing is we are defining what those acquisition conditions should be. Once the data has acquired, then we can go into the data analysis portion of the software and put in all of those things for integration, calibration, and report generation. And Rich, we did have one concern that was brought up in the chat. Sure, hit it. I am not able to add a line under grad pump because it is stuck on advanced settings. Do you have any suggestions? Yes. Instead of advanced settings, go down to the timetable down below. So on your advanced settings, the lower uh, the icon to the left of advanced is a lower facing filled in arrow, lower right hand facing filled in arrow. Instead, Go down to the bottom of that window, bottom of the entire window, you should see where it says timetable and it's empty. Click on that right facing arrow to the left of timetable, that opens up that window and cascades or truncates the advanced window. Now you have your timetable window, you can then select to add the line in the timetable. Thank you, Rich. Beside yep. that, you're more than welcome to proceed. So we have now created our method, and if you haven't done all of the different settings, don't worry about this. This is, uh, again, an introduction to all of these different items. You will have access to your virtual images for the next seven days on these cloud systems. So after we're done today with this two-hour introduction, you'll be able to still go back and get some uh, much more stick time until next Tuesday to be able to run these systems and do your own type of investigation. Before we uh, move on to our single samples and sequences, I do want to save this method. So immediately below where it says acquisition method dash untitled in pretty big bold font or pretty big font, there are a series of icons. The fourth icon from the left has a graphic of what is an old fashioned type of floppy disk with a plus to the right of it. This is to save our method as. If I click on that, it opens up the name of my project and the methods directory within that project. Type in a name to your, pro to your method. Whatever name you would like to use. And then select the Save button. And you should notice once that has happened that your new method is created and it says in the upper ribbon, acquisition method dash, the name of that method dot AMX. 
It is a dot AMX because this is an acquisition method within Open Lab CDS. It is not a dot M method like in ChemStation or a dot MET method like in EasyChrome. That means that these dot AMX methods cannot be read by their predecessor products of either ChemStation or EasyChrome. That being said, you can translate both ChemStation and EasyChrome methods directly into OpenLab CDS without having to retype in all of that information. Again, that is a great topic to go through the OpenLab CDS help and learning to go through and see how to be able to do that. 